and Tomahawk subsonic cruise missiles for land attack. Should any threats slip by the ship's missile defenses, Burke destroyers are also fitted with six torpedoes and two types of machine guns. We have the capability of, uh, of just seeing more and, and being more cognizant of our environment and being able to be more selective with our weapons. I, I think Admiral Burke said, said it best, uh, if I can borrow his quotation when he said, when asked by a reporter, Admiral, how does uh, this ship compare with the ship you had in World War II? He said, if I had had this ship then, there wouldn't have been a World War II. The reason that the R. Lee Burke seems so barren of weapons is that they are hit 90 missiles. Guns and torpedoes were the primary armament of the World War II destroyer. But on Burke destroyers, missiles are the primary armament. Admiral Burke himself played a key role in this development, heading the Navy's research in the late 1940s when naval missiles were first being tested as a way. Its most powerful weapon was its torpedo. Today's destroyers can attack enemy ships over 50 miles away using anti-ship missiles. We have the Tomahawk weapon system, the TASM, Tomahawk anti-ship missile variant, uh, that can reach out quite a distance and be able to put a, a warhead on a ship. For a somewhat closer in action, but still over the horizon, we have the Harpoon cruise missiles, uh, anti-ship cruise missiles. Those are pretty common throughout the Navy. For close in action, I have the option of using my gun system, my 5-inch gun system, or I can use standard missiles in their surface-to-surface -surface mode. can also, of course, control aircraft, and the ship is designed to be part of a carrier battle group, so we can use carrier-based aircraft, or for that matter, land-based aircraft, and direct them to, con to conduct engagements for us. The Harpoon missile carried by the destroyer has been adapted for use by aircraft as well. It can be launched by the Navy's P-3C Orion, as well as the Air Force's B-52H Stratofortress Bomber and the F-16 Falcon Fighter. The long reach of the Tomahawk adds an unprecedented level of firepower to the modern destroyer, enabling an attack on land targets hundreds of miles from the sea. Until the ad in Iraq was a cruise missile launched off of an Aegis cruiser. That kind of capability to project power ashore hundreds of miles with great precision, uh, that's a wonderful capability, and once again, I think it lends to the balance and flexibility of this class of ship. So, the standard missile provides protection against aircraft and cruise missiles at distances unimaginable in World War II. Radar guides the standard to its target, even if the target is moving near supersonic speeds. The standard forms the first layer of the air defense belt around the ship, reaching out dozens of miles. The final layer of defense against enemy anti-ship missiles comes from the close-in weapon system, or SeaWiz. SeaWiz provides us an anti-ship missile defense. We try to engage at the furthest distance. If those break down and somebody happens to sneak through, the close-in weapon system will come into effect there. It's fully automated. It uh, contains its own uh, search and tracking radars. Basically, uh, you can turn the system on and uh, walk away from it, and it'll protect the ship. On the rear deck of the destroyer is a landing pad incorporating LAMPS Mark III electronics for coordinated anti-submarine helicopter operations. The helicopter is a significant addition to the allowing it to seek out and attack enemy ships and submarines dozens of miles away. One of the few criticisms of the DDG-51 was its lack of a helicopter hangar to permit the helicopter to be permanently stationed aboard ship. This was due to the Burke's compact size. 
newer Burke-class destroyers, designated as Flight 2 ships, were lengthened and substantially reconfigured to incorporate a helicopter hangar facility. These ships can carry two SH-60BR Seahawk helicopters. Carrying the LAMPS Mark III advanced electronics system, the Seahawks can be vectored by the Burks to conduct anti-submarine attacks or target over-the-horizon surface ships. For all the sophisticated radar and sonar-directed weapons on board, there still remains a place for the destroyer's traditional weapons, the torpedo and the gun. Torpedoes have been reduced in importance to last-ditch weapons against submarines. Missiles have taken their place in battles with enemy ships. The gun, once the mainstay of destroyer weaponry, is now used mainly for shore bombardment. The impressive array of traditional and advanced weaponry 